a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 98, fitting the internal components, sealing the smoke box and adding some finishing touches. I'll start this episode with a major problem. I could not fit the snifting valve to the wet header because the petticoat pipe was in the way. The only way it was going to be possible to fit this snifting valve was to remove the chimney support. This piece of copper tube with the flared petticoat pipe underneath is only held to the smoke box using two nuts and bolts. Once it was removed, then I did have the access that I needed to the wet header. In the last episode, I loosely fitted the nut that holds the superheater pipe onto the main inlet steam pipe. I'm removing this part because I need to fit a metal plate that I made over the steam pipe and the exhaust pipe. And here is the plate fitted into the smoke box using high temperature silicone rubber sealant. Many, many years ago, when I used to read the writings of LBSC in the Model Engineer magazine, when it got to this part, all he used to say was, break up a piece of asbestos millboard, knead it with some water to make a putty to fill all the holes. Bear in mind that was a long time ago before we knew the dangers of asbestos. I've just fitted the union nut that holds the superheater pipe to the steam pipe. Now I'm fitting the blast pipe. On both of these I'm using some Loctite 542 as a sealant. The Loctite 542 is not strictly required but it will stop the blast pipe from working loose. This is the blower ring and I know it's a bit crude, I'm sorry about that. And here I'm fitting it in place over the blast pipe. The other end connects to the threaded hollow stay which is part of the boiler. Now I need to make two specially shaped pieces of brass. First of all I make them from CAD and I get them as close as I can to a very neat fit around the piping. And here are the finished templates. The next part of the job is to simply cut them out using the bandsaw. I can get both of them from this piece of scrap brass. Once I'd cut out both of the parts using the bandsaw, I cleaned them up using my bench mounted Proxon motor tool with the drum sander fitted. And just in case you're wondering, yes the part is getting quite hot now, but luckily from years of operating steam valves, the skin on my thumb and the side of my forefinger is fairly heat resistant. Once I'd cleaned up both of the parts, here's one of them, I curved them to suit the smoke box. I could have done without the initial piece of brass, but it was something that I showed in an earlier episode, so I thought I will use it. Bring back asbestos millboard, this is a really, really messy job. In the past I have actually used fire cement and that works very well. But I think this is the modern way of doing it because the silicone rubber remains flexible and doesn't crack and seals the smoke box because it's really important that you get a vacuum in the smoke box when the door is closed. This is a really poor quality paintbrush and when I finish with it I will throw it away. A bit more about vacuums in smoke boxes. If you do not have a vacuum in the smoke box, when you open the blower, which blows a jet of steam up the chimney, or you run the engine, which blows a lot of steam up the chimney, this draws the fire. But if these pipes aren't sealed, and there is any other way in for air in the smoke box, then the essential air that the fire needs to burn very brightly will not occur, because the air will come in through all the gaps in the bottom of the smoke box. And that's why it's taken so long to make sure that the pipes are fully sealed. Occasionally I do make mistakes, that's probably why I've been married twice, but this mistake was serious. What I'm showing at the moment is the refitting of the petticoat pipe and the chimney tube. Unfortunately, once I fitted the snifting valve, the petticoat pipe was too wide and got in the way so it was impossible to refit the chimney tube. I remachined the petticoat pipe in my Boxford lathe to make it a bit smaller and then everything fitted. In this clip I've refitted the crossbar and now I'm closing the smoke box door and locking it in place. That's another job out of the way. A very simple job was to clean up this filler cap, and now I'm trying the cover plate in place. It was a bit too tight and I couldn't remove it without bending it. I re-trimmed this cover plate so it could easily be removed. I even had to trim the threads on the end of the handles in the side. But now it's really easy to remove this plate should I need to do it. This part of the locomotive is supposed to be the coal bunker, so why is it a water tank? Well, it's a separate feed for the injector, because the water in the side tanks gets too hot for injectors to function, and this bunker tank is further away from the heat source, so it should be okay. Now I need some coal. Relax, it's not the steam test. I need some special coal, 
to stick in the coal bunker. In this large box of coal there were some small pieces, so I collected the small pieces and now I'm going to stick them onto this plate. And for this I'm going to use 5 minute epoxy resin. I'm going to do one half first and I'm also going to use the plate to mix the epoxy resin on, I may as well. Two pack epoxy resins need to be mixed thoroughly before use. And it's also important to make sure that you have an equal amount from each bottle. One bottle contains the resin and the other one contains the hardener. Once I've finished mixing the epoxy resin, I spread it out, mainly on one side. For this to work, I need quite a thick coating of epoxy resin to stick the coal to it. I didn't see the need to remove the paint on this aluminium plate because it was really well stuck to the aluminium. Now it's time to apply the coal. Don't get too arty with this bit. Coal in a coal bunker is very random. Unless it looks really stupid with an outlandishly large piece of coal, it should be fine. It's slightly reminiscent of laying a path using crazy paving. The difference being this is not pieces of stone, it's coal. It's quite important to move the coal around considerably over the epoxy resin to get a good coating on the underside of the coal. This piece of coal was definitely too big, so I put it back in the box. The large coal box I mean, not the box of specially selected smaller pieces. The next part of the job is to tip the excess coal that isn't stuck down back into the small coal box. And in this clip I've mixed some more epoxy resin and I'm applying it to the other side of the plate. Then I'm going to repeat the process and put coal on this side too. When using this epoxy resin stuff, read the instructions, they are quite important. Eventually the coal looks like this. Once the epoxy resin had dried and all the pieces of coal were stuck down, I took the assembly into the outer part of the workshop and carefully sprayed it using a mixture of gloss and satin paint. This will hide the epoxy resin. I further polished up the water filler cap using a combination of my polishing spindle and some brasso. That's another little job done. It's not finished yet though, I need to pipe the injector, I need to pipe the whistle. Not forgetting the hand pump and the axle pump feeds to the boiler. But that's it for now. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.